One advantage of being in a tall building is you get to do quite a good check of the cloud bases before you take off. Um, one disadvantage of being in a tall building is you get to see how rubbish the clouds actually look before you take off. So I'm flying back to Melbourne today from where we are here in Sydney this morning. This is going to be an interesting flight. It's going to be a tale of a few different sorts of weather. I've got low cloud here in Sydney before we take off. Um, that's lifting though as the day goes on, which is great. So probably I should wait a couple of hours, let the cloud lift and then um, off I go. However, the longer I leave it, the more likely there is a big band of thunderstorms coming across from the west to the east which is going to get to Canberra and Albury, which is where my track is, um, by about 11 o'clock. If I take off too early, I've got the low cloud. If I take off too late, I've got the thunderstorms. So I've really got to pick the lesser of those evils. I've got low clouds, thunderstorms, turbulence, but apparently it's a beautiful day in Melbourne. Hey, hey. Holding point. Contact tower on 132 decimal 8. 1328 at the holding point, Kilo Julian November. Instruments, switches, transponder to out, yoke full and free. Nine glasses. All right, let's go to Melbourne. Bankstown Tower, Kilo Junior November is ready, holding point Alpha 8, Bankstown 8 departure. Kilo Juliet November, morning Alpha 8, cross runway right and line up from A Centre. Cross runway right, line up centre, Kilo Juliet November. Kilo Juliet November, report passing 2000, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, Kilo Juliet November. Alright, full power. Static RPM is good. Airspeed increasing on both. Everything to the green. Departures, Kilo Junior November passing 2300, climbing 3000. Left 170, 3000, Kilo Junior The arrivals coming into Sydney, so I'm here. The arrivals are coming in over the top. Once we're clear, then they can find me up. We leveled off now at uh, 10,000 feet. It's not too bad up here, actually. I'm thinking there might be a few more build-ups around this level. So we've got that kind of low stratus cloud below nice and fluffy, no issues. And then we've got the cumulus clouds above us. Before these longer flights as well, I have to say a thank you to my instructor, Mike Morgan. I always give him a call before doing these flights. I was originally, if you follow me on Instagram, I did actually post this morning that I might be going down the coast because I thought that would be a better option because of these storms coming in from the west. But after talking to Mike, he actually said, well, the weather's moving towards the coast. So even though there will be storms out here later, if I'm going out earlier, it's better to go this side of the storm, or this side of the clouds, rather than that way. These gauges seem a lot more stable now. There's still a little fluctuation, as you can see, that manifold pressure dropping, going up. So it is moving around a bit. But I'm looking here, my RPM on the engine is constant. My fuel flow on the engine is constant and the sound of the engine isn't changing as those fluctuations are happening. And just to give Mike Walden some extra props, 
he said probably when you get towards Goulburn the clouds will probably start disappearing and oh look we're getting towards Goulburn and the cloud layer below us is starting to disappear. on the last video, the one that I shot when I was flying up to, um, I forgot where I was going, flying up to Sydney on the way up two days ago, I uh, had a comment, because I made a comment about autopilot, and I was told that um, someone thought that they didn't want to get into aviation because it's all just autopilots nowadays, uh, and it's basically, well, it's the sort of flying that they don't want to do, they felt that hands-on flying was more flying, um, and just sitting on autopilot, as I do, between Sydney and Melbourne for probably 95% of the flight is not the right way to do it. Now my thoughts on that are the complete opposite. Single pilot IFR, which I'm doing right now, even though we're not in cloud, we're still in controlled airspace and flying under the instrument flight rules. There is a lot to focus on. Qantas 418, descend via the start of flight level 250. For example, radio calls are coming in all the time. I need to maintain situational awareness with everyone else who's around me. I need to make sure that our track is correct. I need to look at the weather ahead and see if I need to make diversions. There's fuel planning that needs to be done. If it is instrument conditions, I need to be looking at instrument approaches for my arrivals, alternates if I can't get into my destination, etc. Et so there's a lot to do. And apart from Milkshake, who's pretty useless at the best of times. No, sorry, Milkshake. Great passenger. But in all seriousness, it's just me here. So autopilot takes away a huge amount of workload like I know I'm maintaining 10,000 feet right now and all I need to do is glance over every now and again and confirm that I also know that I'm on the correct track because of the GPS track that uh, the aircraft is following using the autopilot which is slave to the GPS there are two big things there that's flying the aircraft two big things that I don't have to worry about I monitor I don't just think the plane's doing it and I don't look at it for two hours I monitor it and make sure it's right but I don't have to be on it every single second. I'm not sitting here looking at my artificial horizon, making sure the wings are level, making sure I'm maintaining my altitude, making sure my track is good, drift correction, all that kind of thing. Those decisions, or well, those actions, are handled for me by the aircraft. What it means then is I can concentrate on those other things. It's the flight itself. What's happening next? What's my fuel situation? Am I on the right track? Am I doing the right thing? What's my next frequency with air traffic control? So I believe, flying single pilot IFR, which I do quite a lot, as you'll know if you watch this channel, that autopilot is a really important safety feature. So in this instance, Kilo Juliet November now, the autopilot is turning me from our waypoint Avbeg, uh, which is called, towards Albury. Now I'm not just going to let the plane do that and go, wicked, good job KJ and thanks, I'm going to go back to sleep. No, of course I'm not, I'm going to use the opportunity to monitor the aircraft, make sure that it's doing what it should be doing, planning the next leg, checking my fuel for the next leg, working out what I need to do if I need to deviate. But just to finish on that, to answer that point, from my point of view, I think it comes down to mission objectives and what you're doing with the aircraft. And for me, autopilot is a really important part of the flying that I do in KJM. But thank you for the comment. And keep those sorts of questions coming, because if I can answer that and create a bit of discussion on this channel, I think it just helps everybody learn. And at the end of the day, if we can share each other's experiences and grow safer, happier, and better at what we do, that is a win. Hashtag win. Milkshake, what do you think? Put me on the dashboard. Okay. Mm. direct semis kilo duty in November. So all I've done there is I've just, I've already set it up here, but I went into direct, I found Temis. So we were gonna go to Albury on the white line and then out back to Temis, but he's just asked if I can track direct to Temis, which actually, to be honest, works out a little bit better for us because it means it's a slightly shorter route and we're gonna get there a little bit quicker. But my only consideration was I had to quickly look off to the left and just see if I, there was any weather that that would send us into, but as it happens, uh, it's looking better as we go on. It's fairly clear all the way ahead. 
Then just making sure, obviously, I have to recalculate my lowest safe altitude. So because we're not going on a an actual airway, though on the airways you have these lowest safes. You can see 6,000 would have been the one if we were heading direct to Albury, but because we're not, because we're cutting the corner now, I mean, you can see there that's 7-1, so 7,100. And even though I'm, I'm visual to the ground at the moment, so I'm not too worried about descending, but if for whatever reason something happened and I needed to get down to my lowest safe and there was a cloud or something, at least now I know I've briefed myself it's 7,100, not the 6,000 that we had had we been going direct to Albury. But at the end of the day, it's a good change because it gets us home quicker. We actually might even have a slightly favourable tailwind by doing that um, because the wind was basically off our right wing like that. So as we've turned more to the left, it's actually turned into a slight tailwind. So we've picked up maybe one or two knots of ground speed, which on these long flights, every knot counts. That big weather system that we were looking at a bit earlier has developed. But there are some developing in Albury, which is just ahead of us, but not for a couple of hours on the forecast as well. But you can see the atmosphere changing a little bit. You can see a little bit of instability in some of these clouds. And yeah, big ones like that one out to our right, which probably goes up to about, oh, I don't know, 20,000, 25,000 feet. Definitely ones that you want to avoid and go around. That is actually the one thing I do miss here in uh, Kilo Gini in November. And I think America, when I watch people like Nico flying on Nico's Wings, awesome channel um, as well, by the way. If you haven't subscribed to him, you should. When you see in America, there's um, weather information that can be passed through to uh, the flight displays here. And even though I know it's delayed and you can't, you know, pick your way through storm cells, you can still get a bit of a bit more of situational awareness from that. I do miss not having that in this aircraft. So if ever we did upgrade or changed, one of, I think one of my checkbox items for the aircraft would be a decent weather radar kind of storm scope. Just so on days like this, you can plan ahead a little bit and see things developing. Kilo Juliet November approaching Academy 2500, inbound visual with Quebec. Kilo Juliet November, Marabin Tower, get a uh, track for a, a three mile final for change of runway uh, 17 right and established on uh, final contact tower 123 decimal zero. Uh, three mile final 17 right and uh, 132 for the tower. Kilo Juliet November. Kilo Juliet November, other way around 123 decimal zero. Been a long day. One, two, three, decimal zero, Kilo Juliet November. Hi, yeah. Tower, Kilo Juliet November on final one seven right. Kilo Juliet November, Ramon Tower, good day. Bit of land. Bit of land, Kilo Juliet November. Kilo Tata Juliet, Aria Diamond, for stall. Good day, Juliet. Raven Ground, Kilo Juliet November on Alpha 5, request taxi to main apron. Kilo Juliet November, taxi open. Taxi open, Kilo Juliet November. Tidy up the aircraft, flaps, fuel pump, everything's off there. Transponder back to standby, landing lights are off. Thanks as always for flying along everyone. Thanks also to all the new subscribers who've recently subscribed to the channel. Uh, like I said in the last video, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, it really means a lot to me to help grow this channel. So do click on the subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, if you enjoyed that video, if you enjoyed flying along, give us a like as well. Thank you as always for watching. Next video, we're getting back on another plane, but this time a much, much bigger one. Heading off to Singapore. Now, where does Stephen want his plane?